So the first thing that I want to uh, go over is kind of where you originally started your journey in regards to the YouTube channel. Because okay. I, I remember when you first reached out to me, you were no more than 400 subscribers. Yeah. And then we didn't actually have our collaboration till I think you were at like 436. For some reason, that number was like, it just stayed in my brain. 436 okay. or like somewhere around 546 is when we had our first collaboration. I went on your channel first and then uh, you came on mine and we cross, cross promoted each other. The video's out there. I've got a little playlist on my channel of all my collaborations. You're in there. Um, and that was a ton of fun. And then like overnight between, uh, let's see, I would say all of 2020, like overnight, it just exploded. So give us the background, a little bit about yourself. And then when okay. did you start the YouTube channel? When did you pivot to hit this explosion of over 900 and 30,000 subscribers today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been on YouTube. So I have a lot of people that are like, Hey, what you do looks easy and your channel has grown so much. Uh, when did you get on YouTube 2020? And I'm like, I've been on YouTube since 2008. Like my YouTube channel is older than my oldest son. <laughs> so, um, I've been at it for a long time. And it wasn't until uh, probably maybe five years ago that I decided to really get serious about it, though. Before that, it was more like I would throw things up, see if anything would stick. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't. And uh, then once I authored my first book, that's when I was like, OK, I should probably find a way to let people know about my book and, and what it is that I do. And so that's when I started putting out the financial content. Mm -hmm. And then that helped me get to about a hundred subscribers. Okay. And most of them were family and friends. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you have to start. You have to start with like, uh, yeah. What are the diamonds in your own backyard that you could go mine? Right. And so it was family, friends, uh, in fact, my neighbor, just uh, two doors down, he's my number 12 YouTube subscriber. And um, so pretty cool, right, to pretty have the cool. support of a, a friend like that. And yeah. um, and then my other neighbor was my 500th, 500,000th, excuse me, uh, <laughs> subscriber. So uh, as I went as I went through uh, the years, I was putting up content, but I, I wasn't getting the traction that I wanted. And um, in September of 2019, I said, okay, I want to figure out how to get more publicity and eyeballs on what I do with my book, uh, Taming Wall Street. And when did that uh, which, come out? Oh, that came out in... Um, I think 2018, the spring of 2018. Okay, so 10 years after starting your YouTube channel. Yeah. Got it. So, and that, that book talks about infinite banking and my right. own experience because I've been doing infinite banking uh, personally with my own money for almost 15 years now. And um, longer than yeah. your YouTube channel. Right. Yes, longer than my YouTube channel. Yeah. In fact, I got into infinite banking before I even started offering infinite banking. So you were uh, it was actually what's that? You you were a customer. You were you were I was a customer. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So uh but it was because of what I was seeing in my own policy and in my own life that I was like I told my wife, I, I gotta I gotta help spread this message because I really enjoyed the, the program, knowing my wife was protected, knowing my money was protected, knowing that Uncle Sam couldn't rob me blind with taxation, you know. Right. So anyway, um, I, I started in September of 2019. I said to myself, I need to either have a blog or a podcast or an Instagram page or a YouTube page. And I was like, OK. Which of those, which of those is more, most in line with my personality? 
and which of those is most in line with my ability to succeed because I never, I never want to attempt anything that I can't do well at. Um, and you know, sometimes you don't know what you're good at until you fail. Right. Right. right, right. So, uh, I, I started really pumping content like regularly on my YouTube channel in September of 2019. Right. And then I, I did, I, I reached out to somebody like you and I reached out to a few other people and honestly, most people blew me off. They were like, uh, no, no, thanks. You're too small. I know that. Or I had somebody that was like, uh, what's your, what are your intentions with my YouTube community? And I was like, just education. Like I, I had a pure heart, uh, just yeah. wanted to educate and share information. And they were a little bit suspect of my motivations, but later they, we've become very good friends and, and he now sees that it was all just pure intentions. Right. So, yeah. uh, I, I did this, <laughs> I wanted to ask I did this interview. if you don't mind, um, yeah, all those people that you reached out to when you were hundred, two, three, four, five hundred 500 subscribers, are you seeing a different, you know, behavior now that you're 900 plus thousand subscribers? Or oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you see that kind of like opening up? Oh yeah, 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 come, come, come. But what happened to the, all the questioning? You know, what changed? You know, yeah. you're, you're able to see, see people's characters. I know when you reached out to me, the truth of the matter was I didn't even like look at your subscribers. I was excited that somebody reached out to me. Even though, because yeah. I think when you reached out to me, I, I, I had a couple thousand subscribers. I think I was doing good and I was, I was pumping out content almost every single day and I, I, nobody reached out to me. So when you did and you know, it was at Taming Wall Street and I was like, oh, this guy's a finance guy. And then I was watching your videos. I was like, this guy gets it. He's talking a little bit on infinite banking. He's talking about personal finance. Okay. Maybe, I mean, he looks, he, you know, good looking dude, probably double my age. Maybe he's probably got a lot more knowledge than me. And that's kind of like my, my attitude behind it. And you, you were so transparent in your messaging in the email. You were like, just want to, you know, share education. Um, I can help. I, I you know, want to help promote your stuff because I because you were you said you were watching my material and you liked what I put out. And with that, it was it, it was it was pretty cool. You know, it was I, I had no intent of like, you know, multiplying subscribers. I was just excited. Somebody reached out to me that was a fellow YouTuber. Yeah. And after your um, collaboration, then I started to like think, okay, if I'm going to do this again, how do I find more Stephen Gardner's with same ethics, morals, values, belief systems? W what is going to create a good interview for the audience, not necessarily make me more money or get me more subscribers, get me more likes? Like, what is the community wanting to see? You know, yeah. and how do we move forward from there? So continue where you yeah. where, where you left off. You say you were amping yeah. up the content. Yeah, what? no, that's good. That's good to hear your side of the story because um, I think I think you were either ten thousand or twelve thousand right. strong, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh man, uh, right. this this guy's awesome. And I I would watch your videos and I'd be like, dang, dude, this guy is like crushing it. I love this content, you know, and um, so. Here, here's one thing for anybody that watches this. Um, don't be afraid to go after a whale in a rowboat. Like that's, that's my entire life is, okay, here's a client or a project or a goal that's so much bigger than me or my skill set or my capabilities. And yet here I am in a rowboat. I'm just going after that big whale, you know, full confidence. And um, anyway, so uh, I just started reaching out to people to try to collaborate because I felt like I could bring value to their channel and that they could bring value to mine. And it wasn't about, you know, making money or anything. I knew that that would come. Uh, so anyway, when you when you replied, uh, yeah, let, let's do something. I got really excited. Well, I also did a collaboration with another uh, channel that was around seven or eight thousand, and we talked about money and finance. And then afterwards, we shut off the camera, and he said to me, 
uh, do, let, let's just talk for a, a couple of minutes. He said, because he said, you're really not doing well on YouTube. Uh, but from the research I did before bringing you on, I can see that you've done very, very well in the self-publishing uh, industry. And I had, at the time I had uh, seven books. I now have eight books on Amazon and uh, all but one of them has done very, very well. The team. And he said something to me. He said, you're not going to succeed on YouTube because nobody cares what you're talking about. And I was like, oh, ouch. ouch. <laughs> like that, that hurt, you know? Yeah. And so um, I was like, okay, I'm going to have this uh, come to Jesus moment where I look inside myself and I think, okay, what is it that I could do better? What could I do um, more of? You know, I, I looked at my past videos and I let the audience tell me what they wanted to see. So I, I plucked out the videos that had the best views. Mm -hmm. And I, I just started to kind of build around some of those, right? And around this same time, I was uh, getting more into the stock market. Um, I personally jumped out of the stock market uh, after 2008 when I lost about 38% of my portfolio to the Great Recession. I was like, okay, I'm done. Like I worked too hard to right. lose this kind of money. Mm -hmm. And it took five and a half years to get back to break even. None of this, what we just went through where it was like the world fell off a cliff and then jumped right back, this V-shaped recovery. It was right. nothing like that in 2008. Um, so anyway, I jumped out, I was scared and, you know, but then I was still a point where I was like, okay, I want to, I want to get back in. I started doing research. So then I just started doing videos about things that were actually happening in my own life. Uh, you know, uh, dividend paying stocks, life insurance, how to do better with a car loan, things like that. And I started to make videos about that. And then what I, what I started figuring out was what, what were the key words that people were interested in? and really understanding, trying to get into the mind of the person that might watch my YouTube channel. And after watching uh, you know, or after putting out content, again, just seeing what the audience responded to, uh, I noticed that they were responding to my stock market videos mm -hmm. and they were responding to my stimulus update videos. Got it. Right? And this, now we're in 20... We're now 2020. we're in like April of 2020. April of 2020. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and at how many subscribers were you around, uh, you know, that first quarter of, of 2020? Probably you know? by then I was up to about a thousand or so. Okay. Yeah. The stock, the stock videos, I was starting to get attention, you know, again, being a best selling financial author didn't hurt. <laughs> so, um, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I was, I was, how, at, I was at, at around a thousand. Right. Very interesting how your book sales had no effect really on the YouTube channel, the growth of it. Like it almost yeah. didn't matter. It almost didn't matter that you were an author. It, it, it's like really interesting how the viewer, what their be, how their behavior is on different platforms. Yeah. You know, like if you're talking to somebody on Instagram, you cannot talk to them the same way on LinkedIn, nor can you do the same on TikTok or on Facebook or on YouTube. It, it's, it's very interesting. Once you've tapped into that, it, the game changes. So yeah. you, Q1, you shifted, you created that pivot. You started analyzing what was working and what was not. And you basically threw out what was not working, although you may care about that personally. Yeah. You were focusing on what do people want to hear? Um, yeah, I've always I've always been a big believer in um, follow the opportunity and bring your passion with you where a lot of gurus today preach, follow your passion. And, yeah. you know, if you just if you just try hard enough, uh, eventually you'll get what you want. Right. And suddenly mm -hmm. you'll become a multimillionaire or, or something. And I just I. I, I think that that's true for some people, but for the majority of people, um, you know, it's just a lot of, it's just a lot of work. And so I was willing to put in the work. I was willing to put in the time, do the research, 
learn a bunch of stuff. Um, but then I needed to follow the opportunity and the opportunity was money uh, related things, right? So uh, my book sales had almost zero effect on my YouTube channel, but my credibility of understanding money and having authored financial books, mm -hmm. I think that built credibility in the mind of the viewer where they could say, okay, um, at least we know he's not just some guy sitting in a piece of junk car talking on a broken iPhone about money or something, right? right. So um, no, I no had offense money. To the guy with the broken yeah. iPhone. No offense. What's that? I said no offense to the guy with the broken iPhone. Anyway. I was the guy with the broken right. iPhone. I have it right here. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> oh yeah, I see the crack. Yes, this is my this is my old phone. <laughs> So um, I just, I was like, okay, I'm just going to follow the opportunity. And so um, I did a video about like emergency preparedness and all of a sudden it got like a thousand views and I was like, okay, hmm, that, that's kind of interesting. And then I did a video on uh, how to get money out of a 401k once the lockdown went beyond 14 days and people realized the government had most likely lied to us right yeah. um i i did a video about how to get money out of 401k and it got several thousand views and i was like whoa okay um I, i'm tapping i'm tapping into something here right how many views and what uh oh probably three or four thousand views the 401k video got it 401k okay right now now keep in mind i'm, I'm only like 700 to a thousand people so to get a video that's several times larger than your subscriber base for me was like whoa, whoa. i i i tapped into something mm -hmm. right and so um then i did a video on the stimulus checks and that video got like 7,000 views. And I said to my wife, uh, cause, and we thought she had COVID at the time, it turned out to be viral pneumonia, but I said to her, um, hey, uh, I, wanna, I wanna get uh, our stimulus check and uh, I'm just gonna do research and then I'm gonna share on my channel what I'm researching because uh, I'm a pretty good researcher. And so I just would come on, each day and say, Hey guys, here's, here's what I'm finding. Um, here's, you know, a resource, here's what you could look into. And then I would kind of mix in the 401k and right. the stock market stuff. And then all of a sudden nobody cared about the stock market. Those videos were not doing well and the stimulus were doing better. So again, I just followed the, the opportunity. And then all of a sudden, uh, my subscribers started to grow. And I, I, I haven't tracked it. I don't, I don't know, you know, where it was, but it was growing by a couple hundred a day. Mm. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Uh, I remember when I only had 200. So to now have a day where my channel grew by more in a day than it took me 11 years to grow was like right. mind blowing, right. right? Like, oh my gosh. So that so, this check, just to remind me, the stimulus check video did how many views? Seven thousand plus? Uh, probably. It, I think the first one where I really was like, "Whoa, okay," was seven thousand. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and then you just, really started to tap in to to that messaging because you noticed the other videos started to decline or or just kind of stagged you know they, they weren't people weren't concerned and you were also looking at the comments i'm assuming people are commenting stimulus 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 yeah hey, yeah it was how did you do your research okay cool yeah it was right around this time that uh somebody reminded me that at the end of the day youtube is like uh, a media platform but beneath the surface, it's actually a social media platform. And I was like, okay, what if I treated this like friends that were asking me questions on Facebook? And I just, I started answering every single person that left a comment, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And there were times where I was up till one or two in the morning answering comments because to get through 900 comments, uh, it just takes time. And I, I was really thoughtful about that. And so I would, I would put out a video usually around like one or two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then I would finish up my, my work day because I was still doing financial coaching and I was still doing life insurance and annuities mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. helping people get their, their stock stuff set up and with, uh, with Robin Hood and just sharing ideas on what to do. Uh, of course, I'm not securities licensed, so I wasn't telling them, you know, where to, where to put their money. But, right. um, Anyway, I, I was I, I all of a sudden I found myself working like 10, 12 hour days and I was I was just really exhausted. But I would put my kids to bed and I would tell my wife, listen, this thing, I can feel that there's momentum and this thing's growing. And I want to I want to capture some of that. And she was really supportive, which is um, great. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, because, you know, some wives might have been like, uh, no, you're hanging out with me, you know. And uh, eventually I, I, I had to give up some of that um, because I had to find work-life balance with my family and wife. Uh, but but this, this is just like May and June, right? May, June now, 2020. Where May and June. How, how yeah. many subscribers at this point? May, June. Um, I'm probably up to almost breaking 100,000. Right. So within from, you know, just got done saying April, you were 1,000. May, June, two months, about how many videos do you think you put out in that 60 day window? Um, probably 60. A video was, a day. I, so not I was working, working. I was, yeah, right. I was working step, seven days a week, which I usually never work Sundays, but, right. uh, there was just so much content coming out that I was like, you know what? People are relying on me for information. That's what kind of got weird is like, if I didn't come on for a day, mm -hmm. I started getting all these comments like, Hey, where are you? I've got questions. Well, you know, when's your next update? You, you're, mm -hmm. you're good at delivering information concisely and clearly. Wow. And so it was like, okay, I would go to church and then I would come home and research and I would put out a video in the later afternoon right. uh, on, on Sundays. So, uh, but anyway, so I, I would be up till one, two in the morning, just answering everybody's questions. And I started to build a relationship and then those people started coming back. Right. Right. So I would say from like January to June, I went from like a hundred people to a hundred thousand people. Right. So May, June, we're about, you're, you're pretty much broke the hundred K sub mark and that, that can take people years to do technically it took you over 10 years over a decade to do it but it happened in a two-month time frame the reason for that number one you shifted your messaging to uh really hone in on a, on a trend of what the people wanted to learn about there's a pandemic covid comes out people are confused now there's talks about stimulus checks. Well, how do I get my stimulus checks? My, my neighbor got it, but I didn't. Or my, my friend in another state got it, but I didn't. What, what's going on? And then here you come on as an educator saying, hey, in the state of boom, 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 in the state here, in this state here, in this governor, this, this, and this, that, and here's the research I compiled, and here's where I got my data from. You're, you're like better than Washington Post, New York Times information that is so <laughs> irrelevant and here you are giving relevant content. So it's relevant, evergreen, right? It's a pivot and you amped up your consistency. You did a video a day. Yes. I, I think yep. a video a day, although the videos may not have been perfectly edited and, and intros and outros and pop-ups and end screens and this and that, it may not have had all of that, but I, I can credit a lot of my personal success on my YouTube channel from posting a video a day, every single day, you know, for yeah. a consistent period of time. Another takeaway that you mentioned was you responded to every comment. Most people that are starting YouTube channels, if you're watching, you're looking to start a YouTube channel, or you have one, and you have a couple thousand subscribers, if you're not responding to your existing audience, it's like you're ignoring them. And especially yeah. if you're not putting out content 
that they subscribed for initially. If you start veering yeah. off like this, you, you, you actually start to lose your, yeah. you may not lose the subscriber number, but they're not there. They're not watching. Yeah. The watch time goes yeah. down. The, everything goes down. So yeah, those are some one, one thing, one take. thing to be clear on one thing to be clear on, cause I'm helping my wife build her YouTube channel mm -hmm. and she's up to, I think 43,000 subscribers now. Nice. And, um, I, but I tell her don't, don't get hung up on the subscriber number. Correct. What you want are views. So it's the views that are going to tell you if you're, giving your community what they want. Absolutely. If, if, yeah, because like I put out a video like at, at a time when I was getting, let's say 200,000 views a day. Mm -hmm. And then I would put out a money video that would get, let's say 40 or 50,000 because those would do less than the stimulus videos. But I put one out, my 10 favorite books. To this day, it only has like 7,000 views at a time when I had like half a million subscribers. So it was like, psh, psh. they're not, they don't want to hear about that right now. They you know, don't. they don't, or, or was it, they don't want to hear about 10. So I almost gave up, but then uh -oh. like, uh, about 10 days later, I did a video on just one book mm. and that video got almost 50,000 views. So then I had to just go, okay, it's not that they were against 10 books it, or against books. It was 10 is too many for me to, you know, uh, handle right now. But if I just talked about the one, mm -hmm. it, it, it went really re went much better. So um, my focus became on views and uh, length of video, um, how much detail to go into. I mean, these were all just things that I, I just had to feel them in my gut, right? Like, okay. Uh, I could be really, really thorough, put out the very best uh, uh, video content, but it was 16 minutes and I was losing people at four, you know? And, yeah. and so you have to become very conscious of your analytics. Um, but, yeah. you know, until you have analytics to review, you don't know what to review, right? Correct, correct. Which is why it's important to respond to your audience, comment, even comment on your own videos. <laughs> Hey everyone, comment below, let me know, was this valuable? Yeah. Do you wanna see something else? What's your favorite video on my channel so far? What's your favorite yeah. topic? You know, that, that, yeah. for I just me, I, I focused on, on views as well, like you said. I also focused on my, on my watch time. And when I was seeing that people were watching my videos for more than 10 minutes long, that gave me permission and and really the authority to do longer paced content video that was zoned in on on one major topic kind of like you said instead of 10 things i just talked about one thing yeah honed in on it and i talked everything i possibly could about that one topic and just kept going with it so that's that's powerful yeah, yeah. so another thing for people to think about is I, I just did some paid consulting with a gal that's trying to get her page up and running and she's been on YouTube for like six years mm -hmm. and she's got more videos than me. And, uh, but you know, and it's been a long time for you, but like, I still remember it's still fresh in my mind, putting out a video that I spent hours and hours crafting and it gets like three views and you're like, okay, uh, the sad truth is two of those three views are me checking if there's more views. <laughs> so, uh, you know, anyway, I, I said to her, I said, look, you, you've got to let the content tell you mm -hmm. what people are searching for and what people want to hear. And, and the example I gave her was I said, OK, why did this video that uh, says planking get four views and this video that says beach body planking get 400 views. Mm. And she goes, I don't know. And I go, I do. They, the, it's, they're searching the word beach body. They're not searching planking. Right. And so I said, you need to tap into the things that people are already talking about. Right. Right. And I, I, I do the same. I, yeah. I do the same. I do the same thing with my wife. I'm like, listen, uh, I know you don't like, 
uh, Kim Kardashian. You think she's super vain or, or whatever, but there's a lot of people that search her. And so if you could, if you could draft off of her name, talking about something, right? Uh, when it comes to coaching women or whatever, like, okay, listen, uh, here's what Kim Kardashian did wrong with her diet or with her relationship or whatever, but mm -hmm. you tap into something that people are already searching, which is Kim Kardashian. They're not searching Casey Gardner, right? That's my right. Wife so you, you have to just kind of get into, you know, what are people searching? What are they thinking about? And then you go give them what it is that they want to see. Correct. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. When I started making my videos, I took all the emotion out of it in terms of what I wanted to bring to the to the table. I, I, I kept my emotions on the side and just focused on the logic. Here is what people are searching for. These are the titles I'm going to hone in on. Over time, I can then start to implement my name and brand. You know, it, it was it was always there. They just wasn't searching for that. They don't care right away. Yeah. They start to they start to care when they see the numbers and the views and all the fancy cameras and the flashy flashy. Then they're like, "Wait a minute, I got to pay attention to this guy. I found him." To I mean, I have so many subscribers and clients that said, "You know, I watched you since day one, yeah. and I didn't actually take action till a year, two years, almost three years later, um, just because of whether it was it was no like and trust or." You know, there was other options, whatever the, the case was, you know, or it could have just been themselves not not ready to to, you know, trust somebody on the Internet. So when you take the emotion out of it, you just give them what they're here to learn, what they're searching for, craft it in your own way, deliver your message and get out. You know, and yeah. don't stress on the views and the likes. Yeah. You, 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 you look to see what's working, not yeah. how pretty was the video, because if you focus on pretty and and this needed to be edited and that none of that in my opinion is as important because my best performing videos still to this day are you literally see me walking to my board and then when the video's done i'm like have a good day and i click a button shut it off you see that you know uh, yeah you, you, you see the little like you can tell this kid's in his bedroom i see the little side of his bed he tried to hide yeah. it didn't work i i see <laughs> I see he's using freaking sunlight for his lighting, like, and it's bouncing yeah, off the so board. Yeah, so you had to do it at a certain time to get the best light. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> couldn't afford these. I got a $500 light bulb right here. This thing's insane. But I, I couldn't afford that back then. Yeah. You know, so I made the bet. And when you come at them raw and authentic, man, what, what a trend it is right now to be raw and authentic. And with your videos, that you're putting out every day, I can tell you, you're not exactly spending hours upon hours editing these things. I mean, I, I feel like you're, you're, you edit the first couple seconds, you know, before you do like that, you know, record and you look up, you get ready. And then when it's done, have a good day, bam, that, yeah. beginning and ending. That's how you edit, if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, uh, that's I've how got, I do, I've gotten that's better. How I, so that's how I do I, my I, editing I, as well. You know? Yeah, I would, I would say that uh, my first probably, Oh, uh, until like January of this year, I, I didn't do any additional editing. Well, that's not true. Okay. So around probably October of 2020, um, where are we I at tried... in subscribers, October, 2020, where are we at subscribers? Oh, uh, probably, probably about 500,000. Okay. Taking yeah. notes, taking notes. Because I thought I thought I would be I thought I would be at about six or seven hundred thousand by August, and I was not. I, I was you know barely at like four hundred, and I remember being disappointed. But at mm -hmm. the same time, like I can't believe anybody watches me. You know, <laughs> like there there was uh, yeah. and, and, you know it's just like and you're uh, competing. You're competing with the other guys. Meet Kevin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Meet Kevin. Stephanie. Clear value. Uh, you know, and and that was the other thing. That's what slowed my growth was all of a sudden it exploded. So there was like maybe four or five of us that were doing these, this topic. Correct. And then all of a sudden there was 45. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it, there was 145 and it became ultra, ultra competitive. 
And I saw my views going down. My subs were growing very slowly, but I stuck to it. I stuck to it. And um, so, yeah, about this time, probably about half a million. And then that's when I said, I think I want to start mixing in some content that isn't stimulus and it isn't necessarily money. And so I, I started uh, just mixing in other things and um, I got some views and I was like blown away. I was like, wow, okay, maybe that was a fluke, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so then I tried another one and it got views, but it got less views. And uh, then I learned a very important lesson is on the days when I, I released two videos in the same day, I had to be very careful not to cannibalize and eat the progress of my video, okay? So for example, this, this first one that I tried, all of a sudden it was trending towards like 60,000 views. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe people are watching this video. Right. It was about like mm -hmm. aliens and there was this uh, metal monolith that randomly showed up in Utah. I don't know if you saw it on the news. It was like this metal statue that, that showed up. Right. So anyway, the video is trending towards 60,000 views. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to I got to do my uh, daily news update. It's mm -hmm. almost two o'clock. Right. So this video had only been going for three, maybe four hours. It was my first time editing. I, I figured out how to put in pictures and little sound noises. It was terrible. I go back and watch it now. And again, I go, how did anybody watch this? But I was so genuine and the content was good, even though the editing was terrible. And But I as soon as I launched that other video, that one went like this. I mean, just like I, you, I could show you a picture of it. Here, I'll just draw it really quick. I'm, I'm a terrible artist. It was it was like, I don't know if you can even see that. It was like, okay, it's trending upwards, and then it just fell off a cliff. It was like, it was like YouTube made the video not exist. It was crazy. Wow. So I, I learned right then, okay, wait a minute. I have to be careful not to cannibalize or eat into my own content because you know that video probably took me an hour and a half and I was super excited. And then all of a sudden I just, I, I cut, I cut my own legs out from under me. And then, you know, but now over time I look back and that video is at like 130,000 views. So it continued to get views. Uh, but that was an important lesson for me was if you're going to release more than one video a day, you've got to be super careful not to cut off the progress of the first video. Got it. So that's another, so here you are also, you know, constantly learning, you're making mistakes, even at a half a million subscribers. So mistakes don't go away. You simply learn from them, you pivot, you don't make it again, obviously, and you keep going. So now, um, to go from 500 to a million, was there anything different that you, you, you did from, so now we're in say November 2020 up until today, we're in March 2021. Was there anything else that you found that really worked, number one, um, or just was it a combination of, of many other things? So kind of tap into that for yeah. a second and then we'll, we'll dive into some other topics. Yeah. So right around this time, uh, again, things became ultra competitive. My views were down. I was like, uh, I, I, I don't know if I want to do this, but the people, my community kept me going, right? Like just them asking questions, appreciating the videos. And here's the other thing. If you go to my videos, and I don't know that it will be this way forever, but I've had big, big YouTube channels reach out to me and say, how do you get so many likes and so many comments? And my answer is, I don't know, right? But like, I'll give you an example. And this is not to knock uh, Meet Kevin because I'm gonna be going live this Saturday with Meet Kevin. He's a good friend of mine now, right? Mm -hmm. But like, let, let's say that let's say that he had 300,000 views and I had 300,000 views. He would have like 6,000 likes and I would have 60,000 likes. 
Mm. I don't know why. I, 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 so, and I would, and he, he would have like 12 comments. Maybe, maybe <laughs> it's the hair. You know, I, I, I had uh, somebody, he said, the only, the only reason that you're successful is that you're uh, almost handsome, you know? And I was like, <laughs> it's like, okay, well, um, yeah. I mean, I can't change my looks good or bad, you know? Um, and I get teased about my hair a lot. I get oh man, I've, I've been watching teeth. the, I'm watching the comments and I'm cracking up. People are calling you a mix between Clark Kent and someone else. Like I can't remember who it was, but they were like, this is like the, the financial Superman. You know, I'm yes. seeing all the comments. I'm like, oh my good. And I've, I've had some of my, uh, some funny comments as well. Some people call me the Bob Ross of, of finance. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I didn't yeah, I like that. Bob Ross a lot. <laughs> I didn't know who he was at first. My, when oh. I, when I mentioned to my girlfriend, she died laughing. She was oh cracking gosh. up. I was like, who's Bob Ross? And she was like, you don't know who Bob Ross is? And she pulled him up. I was like, oh my God, I do know who that is. I never yes. knew his name. I saw yeah. him when I was a kid. I would I used to paint. And I and there was a time where I probably painted when I was a kid. I used to play with Play-Doh and all that stuff and have his voice, you know, just running. And I was just like blown away. So that, yeah. I, it cracked me up to see the yeah. comments in there. And understand yeah. that that if you if you lean into that, people feed others, you know, and and that kind of causes a trend as well, you know. Yeah. People people want to be social and want to connect, you yeah. know. Why does he have his hair like that? Why has he got a big old American flag in the back? Why is he using Baby Yoda? And the people look, you know. I know yeah. I do. I I think, you know, of all the people that I follow and listen to on YouTube, every now and then. Sometimes I just pick a random video to see what your background's about. And that gives me some ideas of yeah. uh, what I could potentially. Yeah. So yeah, I, tr really I try to, I try to, I try to mix it up. You know, it does crack me up when people are like, take down that flag. And I'm like, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck getting, right. get, good luck getting rid of the American flag in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, right. Um, but okay. So back to your question, you know, I, I wasn't like on the verge of giving up around October, but I was, I was, uh, burning out, it, you right. know, six days a week, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes as many as eight or nine shows a week. Cause I was also doing a Wednesday night YouTube live every, every Wednesday. When did that start? Cause I did notice that as well. That, that started in the summer. And then by, by fall, I was exhausted. I, I couldn't do any more shows. I was just too, okay. I was too burned out, you know? And so I unfortunately had to give that up. And then we started, my wife and I started doing it like just once a month again, and I'll try to do it more uh, cause things are calming down a little bit, but um, I really enjoyed doing them, but they're high energy. Yeah. Uh, they're a lot more pressure and, um, by then I've already worked a full day because I'm coming on, on late at night so I can get the East Coast and the West Coast to be after hours. So, OK, so uh, as I as I starting to notice, like not even a decline, just a flat line, it's getting ultra, ultra competitive. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it would be like if all of the sudden uh, like 250 new velocity banking channels popped up overnight. And none of them are like crushing it, but they're sucking up enough views collectively to hurt you, right? Right, right. And so it was like, okay, um, and I, I had never done this the whole time. And I think that this actually helped me, but never once did I clickbait my community. And I noticed a lot of these other people were using clickbait. And so I just said, you know what? high views or low views, I'm going to be honest and operate with integrity. That's um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trick people who are desperate for a check, uh, with, with a clickbait title or something. Right. So I stuck to one title, uh, which helped me, but the, the other thing was, okay. So the one horse I had in the race was stimulus, right? Going, going into October, I added a second horse, which was talking about politics and the election. Mm, another that was the friend. Okay. That, well, but that's when the comments started getting really, really ugly on my channel. Before, oh, I, bet. I bet people would just like attack me for having big teeth or, or 
old fashioned haircut or this guy must dye his hair with hair polish. Nobody has hair that dark. Like just two days ago, someone said, look at this idiot with black hair. And I was like, so I, I, you know, I don't usually respond to those because they're just trolls. But I, wrote, I just wrote him back and said, you know, like half the world has dark hair. There's nothing insulting about what you said, you right. know? Like here it's you and me with dark hair. Like the, half the world has dark hair. Black. Like it was supposed to be offensive or something. So anyway, I added in the politics and oh my gosh, I had to be as neutral as I could mm -hmm. because if I said anything like pro Joe Biden, I got eaten alive in the comments. <laughs> if I said anything pro Donald Trump, eaten I alive. got eaten alive in the comments. Dumbass. It didn't matter, right? right? And right around this time, both politicians were were pumping YouTube ads like crazy. Mm. So because I would say Joe Biden or Donald Trump that or Nancy Pelosi or whatever, then YouTube would show an ad, right? About that. And 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 so then I would be hello and welcome to today's stimulus check update, right? And then people would be like, screw you, mother effer, you got Trump on your channel. And I'm like, I don't control the ads. Like, so all of a sudden it was like. I was starting to see views, but it was really angry views. And it was over something I had no control over. Right. You know, so I just tried to address it. Like once a week, I would say like, hey, everybody, um, just a quick reminder. Um, I don't control who advertises on YouTube. That's YouTube. Um, I'm just here to give you information on what's going on in the news right now. Right. You're sticking. So to that was. Sticking to the facts, you're stick. You're keeping it logic. Yeah, it was it was really hard, and you know, I I feel like you know I probably could have picked a side and and seen even more growth, but I didn't want to because I don't really love politics, um, and so I tried to I tried to go down the middle road as best I could. But you know, there were times where I had to be hard on Nancy Pelosi. There were times where I had to honestly be hard on Donald Trump, and you know, like. I would get blasted in the comments, but the truth was, you know, they were doing things that were hot in the media. Steve right. Mnuchin was hot in the media, you know, like the White House was hot in the media. And so I had to go where the story went. But, I, you know, I had to I had to really thicken my skin and mm -hmm. and not take it personal. Correct. That that's huge because your your main horse, like you said, was was stimulus and naturally that topic of stimulus became political. So you as a finance person gets to come in and say, look, th this is my expertise, money. You know, this is what I do. Here's what you need to be aware of. EIDL, PPP, ba ba ba. And when is it coming? Well, according to what Donald Trump said, according to what Joe Biden, according to what Nancy Pelosi, these different people are saying, here's how the, the, the process is moving along. And yeah. you are completely, you know, you're, you're, like you said, neutral. So you're staying out of what I believe in that person. Rather, you're just going over what did they say? Because most people are not gonna tune into the news uh, and watch. Because if they're far this way or far that way, they're, they're just not gonna tune into what yeah. that person has to say. Yeah. Well, you as an American citizen, if I'm not aware of what the Democrats are saying and the Republicans, and if I just get my information from Republicans or if I just get my information from a Democratic you know, run channel or, or media, I'm completely oblivious to what these guys are doing. And both yeah. have power. Both yeah. have power and influence. So here yeah. you are bringing both and it's so educational and it, you're not selling nothing. You're not you're not encouraging people to do one thing or the other you're just like here here here's here's the facts here's the information yeah you know yes yeah, so i i had to i had to be like a blend of cnn and fox <laughs> news and both of them are very controversial and heated and they mm -hmm. they draw a certain crowd and right. i was just trying to like gingerly walk between the two <laughs> And right. share information. Yeah, and here's the other thing. For those who are watching that are aspiring content creators, you want to start your own YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, wh whatever it is, Clubhouse. Um, you, now, here, here's a really good question to ask, is at 900 plus thousand subscribers, 
How important is it to, you know, be aware, uh, have awareness of what you say, how you say it, when you say it, what you say, because yeah. there's that there's that little maybe worry or fear of say being canceled. You know, that's yeah. like a popular word. Popular word now. You know, being canceled just for giving helpful information. Yeah. You know? So. From, from your point of view now, now that you have a large base and community, which gives you authority and responsibility as a kingdom citizen, how aware, you know, how are, do you feel like you're navigating walking on eggshells or is it more of a, just an awareness that this could die out, that that whole trend of canceling culture could, could either die out or maybe it picks up in the meantime as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as an educator and a teacher, how do you operate? Yeah, uh, yeah, I still feel like I'm on eggshells and have to be very cautious. Um, okay. And it's not because um, I'm worried that I'm gonna talk about something that's gonna get me canceled. I mean, if somebody wanted to come cancel or ruin my life, you know, I guess today it's really easy to do that. I'm, that's not my personality, personally, right. um, but, um, yeah, I do. I have to be, I have to be careful, you know, and, you know, because I grew by several hundred thousand people during an election cycle, uh, there's still heated opinions, you know? And so like, I'll, I'll give you an example is like, I'll say, um, you know, president Biden, uh, did X, Y, Z today. And there's there's people in my community that are like, don't say his name. I hate that guy. You know, it's like, he, what? I mean, what do you want me to say? Like right. President B? Like, right. I, like, you know, and it was it was the same Maybe. thing. And I, I would say like Pre President Trump, you know, did X Y Z, and they'd be like, it's almost oh. like their names are triggers. Like, you oh know? my gosh, yeah. And, you know, some of that, some of that, I think, is the news uh, mm -hmm. has like made them uh, both cringeworthy names where it's like, if if you aren't for them, then you have to be against them. And I, I don't agree with that type of thinking. Um, so, but uh, anyway, uh, so I, I saw a lot of growth during the stimulus and the political cycle. Right, so now, <laughs> so just a little kind of timeline check. October 500K where at what month did you start to see the rise and about how much additional subscribers did you did you feel you got yeah um after january it really started to slow down because people got their people got their second stimulus check uh it was becoming obvious that biden was going to be uh inaugurated okay um and so i i think i kind of both of those horses started to lose a little bit of their Traction. A little bit of their, uh, you know, uh, search, search power mm -hmm. on Google and also on um, YouTube. And so uh, the growth, the growth has been slower and I expect it to slow down with this final stimulus package. Right. But I, I'm I'm not going anywhere. I'm you know, I, I expect to see a dip in my views. Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to have any kind of dip in my commitment to my community or right. my channel or what I'm trying to build. If anything, it's going to be stronger. Right. So January, 2021, where are we at in subscribers? Probably we're around like 800 by now. Okay. So that means from November to January, that was probably a crazy time with all the, you know, the different states and the different voting yeah. and this is wrong, that's wrong. So that I guess a lot of eyeballs were on that. And then the um, the fact that, OK, now we're more than you know, almost eight months into this. When's the next check coming? The next yeah. stimulus, right? So people are concerned, highly aware. So you're at 800,000 in January. So then probably from February up to this point, now you're at 930,000 or more at this point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I just crossed 930 this week. 930. Got it. So that means you are understanding that the trend is just like anything. Trends up uh, and then they they, yeah. they they fade out. How are you going to pivot again if you feel like you need to 
um, or do you think now would be the perfect time once that trend starts to die off? Do you think bringing a message like infinite banking would be appropriate or, you know, like the books that you have written, where do you feel that you could leverage that 930,000 subscribers, whether they're yeah. engaged yeah. with you or, or not? That's a big base, you know, so I'm yeah. wondering. It, it, it is a big base, um, you know, but also at the same time, they're not all watching, uh, you know, like there, there comes a point where, and I'm sure you went through this, where all of a sudden your subscribers are higher than your views. Correct. And you, you have to like, you, you almost have like, not like a mental breakdown, but you have this like mental frustration where you're like, wait a minute, I used to, I used to get more views than subs. What am I doing wrong? And it, you just have to, you have to be conscious of the fact that trends change. Mm -hmm. um, things work themselves out. I've been very conscious of the fact that this, this uh, you know, was like being strapped to a, an Elon Musk rocket. <laughs> um, and, you know, eventually it's going to come down. Now, where I'm worried for some of the other stimulus updaters is they've never done a single video outside of stimulus. And I think their channels are dead. Mm, see, that was something I had a good uh, talk with my marketing guy. You know, I was I was saying, you know, I was like, man, should I jump on that stimulus trend or not? And I, in my mind, I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to do it because my views are so my watch time. I have no I, have, I do not care about subscribers. It's my views and watch time. And the fact that that is so high on the topic that I'm covering. So that's why I did, I did not take that trend. Now, if, if I wasn't getting the traction on my previous content, then it would have been like, oh, let me jump on that trend and then weave it, make it personal, build my brand around it, but also have an exit strategy, which I think you have. Because I, I you've, do, got the books. Yeah. you've got the books, you've got that before you blew up, you did have a, a nice base, whether it was 1,700 subscribers. Those same people, believe it or not, those are the ones that are buying policies, that are buying your books. Yeah. Um, they're not just there for the free content. Now, yeah. with the, the, the 100K to 900,000, those subscribers, even if it was only 10% of 900,000 that were like, Steven Gardner all the way, right? <laughs> That's 90,000 people. Those out of those 90,000, if all you got was 1% yeah. to buy your book or to buy a policy or to get coaching, that's 9,000 additional customers. That's an easy six multiple seven figure business. Yeah. It's it just yeah. simple math, right? Yeah. And that's just super conservative. Now, let's say you're a good salesman, 4%. 5%, 10% and up, yeah. you know, so that, that's, yeah. so what is that exit strategy for you? If there is one, like, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be creating a few pro programs, um, going forward. Um, also, um, I think that people actually enjoyed hearing the news from me, so I'm going to keep that alive. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll just continue. I know I'm going to see a dip, but then you know what? I'll, I'll be fine. Um, I'm going to survive. There's one channel. I don't want to say his name. But, um, you know, he was getting like three or 400,000 views a day. He grew his channel to over 300,000. And then he transitioned away from the stimulus over to finance. And now he's lucky if he gets 800 views. Mm. I mean, wow, what a difference, right? Yeah. Like, to go from being like three, let's just call it 350,000 subs and only 800 people watch your video. See, that's my worry for a lot of these people is they've only had one horse in the race and right. now nobody cares about that horse, right? Yep. Yep. And that's why I've been mixing in other content. Uh, that's along why I've been mixing way. Along. all along the way, right? So people... And I believe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'll be the guy only getting 800 views by next week. I don't know, right? But either way, I'm committed to moving forward. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that will be the case. But um, 
anyway, uh, you know, I do, I worry for some of these people that they uh, were only known for a trending word. And then the trending word was no longer trending, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. there, there's even some other big channels that I'm like, okay, I think, I think that they'll be okay. Um, but they, they, you know, are going to have to be really smart about their, their transition but I don't know what their transition plan is. Right. So, but for me, I'll continue to do the news. I'm going to continue to do money videos. I'm going to continue to do trending news videos. So I I'm committed to succeeding. Like, I don't think I'm going to be the guy who has almost a million and only gets 800 views. Um, but you never know. I mean, I, I could, I could make YouTube mad and they YouTube slap me and I'm out of business. That's one thing people have to be aware of is if you get off those algorithms or you offend YouTube somehow, uh, you you can be you can be canceled. Correct. Very quickly. To to recap here, started in 08 with the YouTube channel, came out with a with your main uh, your, your your most uh, highest gross selling book, Taming Wall Street, in 2018. You've been practicing infinite banking, the infinite banking concept, becoming your own banker for 15 years. Started off as a customer, but it wasn't until uh, after 2008, uh, between 2008 and 2018, when did you actually start selling infinite banking? Oh, so. uh, let's see. The selling was probably like 2009 or 10. Um, let's see. Okay. No, yeah, because I, I've been doing it full time for about 12 years now. So it, it was probably around uh, 2009. Okay, so 2009, started selling it, providing value, teaching it. Then, uh, you know, 2018 going to 2019, you amped up the content, you made your pivot in Q1, really, of 2020, and that was stimulus. That was the big. Trojan horse, so to speak, that really, you know, uh, uh, took off and you were at 1000 subscribers. These were some key videos that you posted, uh, which was emergency preparation that got a thousand views. Then it was the 401k video, how to take money out of your 401k. And that was something that I did tap into. So my horse that really helped me uh, gain a lot of subscribers and to, to put this into practical terms, right? Steven's got 900 plus thousand subscribers, but I, I want everyone to know that you don't have to say, like, think you're not successful if you don't have a hundred thousand. I, I can tell you as a, as a smaller YouTube channel, 35 plus thousand subscribers, that brings over a multiple six figure income for me, right? And that's just 35,000 subscribers. When you tap into your community, 35,000 people, that, that's a lot of people, you know? Yeah. And my channel has over 2.6 million views. I know, I know YouTube channels that have quadruple the amount of subscribers, nowhere near the amount of views I have, yeah. right? So it's that understanding of your, of your marketplace. So just wanted to, you know, provide that practicality in it. So yeah. I, I, I tapped into a 401k video where I was like, how to leverage your 401k to you know, pivot in a pandemic. I did something like that, got a bunch of views. So Steven got 3,000 plus, then it was a stimulus check, 7,000 plus. May to June, 2020, he's floating at 100K subscribers, starts coming out with a live stream. So he's, now he's doing seven, eight, nine videos a week. Uh, October starts to approach burnout, 500 plus thousand subscribers. You, you made a little pivot personally to make sure that the machine keeps going which is important. You then add, going from November to January, you add a second horse, politics, to really pump up the original uh, uh, message of stimulus, providing that message, and you're also providing the news. So many people stopped watching the news because it was so negative. And here Stephen comes in, positivity, smiling in every video, it's these little small characters, put the baby Yoda, Put the hat, put the American flag, it, 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 adding the personality into it. We're floating 800 plus thousand subs January 2021. March 2021, 930,000 plus subscribers. Planning on creating another pivot, 
right, providing news. And one thing I wanted to uh, mention here that I think would be valuable to you uh, is maybe, um, and this is going to be my question is, you know, how important is collaboration, number one? And one thought that I had was someone in your position, I was just thinking, man, how cool would it be if you brought in other YouTube channels that have built their base around providing the news, money topics. So that means those people, they didn't catch a trend and now they're on their channel. They, they built their base around providing the news. Yeah. So someone like a, uh, a Patrick Bet David, not sure if you're familiar with him. Yes. But yep. he recently pivoted where he used to provide nothing but personal finance, network marketing, business, and he was always in the political, he was very knowledgeable in the political realm. But up until the last 12 months, he amped it up, started a podcast, moved to Boca, Florida, started a whole organization around politics and educating people about different catchy, trendy topics. And I was thinking maybe for you, that would be super cool. You bring in somebody, do like maybe multiple interview style, because what I've noticed uh, in terms of YouTube trends is people are people are watching more collaboration videos, I believe, and they're tapping into just conversational dialogues where it's totally transparent, um, which is a key word that I've been using. So want to get your thoughts on that. But how important is collaboration in a time like now, 2021 pandemic, all these crises going on, but also in regards to pivoting? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, the old saying, two heads are better than one, mm -hmm. um, is probably true. Um, I'm, I'm always open to collaboration. Um, on my own channel, I've, you know, had to figure out when, when do I bring people on, what day of the week do I release that? Um, and so it's something that I will definitely be doing more of. Um, I've, in fact, I've got my first interview on my own channel coming out for the first time in like six months. Um, I'm going to be talking to somebody about silver and gold and Bitcoin. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm excited that. about that. Yeah, I'm excited to, to talk about that. So uh, anyway, we'll see how it goes. It, you know, again, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm in uncharted waters. But again, um, like even though I'm 900,000 big, I still feel like I'm the guy in a rowboat going after a big whale, you know, and I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to put in the work. Um, I, I think that uh, I was smart to start transitioning to other topics um, so that I wouldn't be left behind. Cause I do, I, I worry for some of these channels. I, I like, I've even had a few of them reach out to me and they're like, well, I guess I'll start another channel. And I'm like, why, why would you do that? Like just, Take that momentum and start pushing it in a different direction. And they just can't, they can't catch a vision for it or they don't have enough faith in themselves or their community. And I just love my community. I believe in them and uh, I have done my very best to bring value to them. And I hope that they will stick around with me. Awesome. Awesome. And so when it comes to collaboration, um, how, how important is it to, you know, more so look at the person and their character rather than their likes, views, subscribes, and authority in the marketplace? What's more important? Views, yeah, likes, I, subscribes, or is it more of a characteristic that you, you know, uh, what, what, what eventually makes you say yes when you go to class? Yeah, I, th I, I think for me personally, I have to like the content that they're putting out. Um, so when, when I was smaller, I really liked your content. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm the size that I am, I still really like your content, right? Right. Yeah. So for me, it was about the person and the content they're putting out. Um, there's a few people that, you know, they've asked me to collaborate, but I just, it doesn't, it doesn't line up with my values. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're like either very anti-Christian or okay. uh, they just talk about, they're, they're like, um, 
they're they're too one-sided when it comes to politics and i don't want to walk into a lion's den yeah. and be ripped apart because of political stuff because i'm not trying to build a political channel right right so uh i would say the the person and their content is important to me also you know is it something i i like you know is it in my my circle of influence as far as money goes. So like, I'll give you an example. Um, if like, like meet Kevin, I'm going to be on with meet Kevin. We're going to talk about uh, bank on yourself, the pros and cons. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about stocks. We're going to talk about real estate. I'm totally open with that. I'm also looking at collaborating with a car YouTube channel that drives Ferraris and different things as just kind of something fun to bring to my community. Mm. I'm also talking with a channel that they cut things in half with a water jet and I just want to go do it. I think it looks really cool. Mm. But then I've also been hit up by channels and I don't want to say which ones they are. And some of them are money and some of them are politics and some of them are just like dumb stuff that I would never be involved in. I'm not willing to risk my reputation or put out content that I don't think my community would want. And so right. I've, I've said no to those people. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, that's that's good. And I guess to provide a little more insight, when when Steven's talking about values, the content, the ethics, the morals, you know, I, I would say here are some of the things that, you know, even since day one, that made me say yes when Steven or, or, originally reached out to me. I noticed right off the bat, kingdom man, you know, believer in Christ. So that means he's unapologetically in love with his Lord and Savior. I'm the same way, unapologetically faithful and, you know, shameless in what I believe in. Um, he was also a fan of Velocity Banking. And that was like one of the main topics I was covering. And then like hidden, didn't even really realize it. He knew about infinite banking. So I was like, whoa, that's cool. And then now he's talking silver and gold. Now he's talking crypto. Before I met Steven, I didn't know anything about cryptocurrency or really that much on gold and silver. I would just personally buy the physical gold and silver on like a, every quarter or so. But, you know, crypto became uh, an important topic over the last, I'd say, six to nine months. It really, you know, amped up in value in terms of Bitcoin, Ethereum and, and other altcoins, stable coins, blockchain, all, you know, DeFi projects, things like that. So here he is getting ready to do an interview. I'm like, that's cool. That helps me or, or want to stay engaged with his material. And look at us now today. We're, we're, we're collaborating again today. Uh, and this has been so exciting. I've got so much value from this, being able to go all the way back, give a nice you know overview of what's going on, what to look forward to in the, in the next coming months, right? And as we wrap up here, is there anything you would like to share regarding the main things that you're you're working on um, for for your community, um, or just a recap before we close out here? Anything you'd like to, you know, share with you know my audience and yours as well? Yeah, uh, I think the main thing that I would uh, say is um, don't don't limit your thinking like. I, I never thought I would have a channel that had 900,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. My goal, my goal for 2020 was to get to a thousand subscribers, <laughs> <laughs> a thousand. That's and awesome. my key word for the year 2020 was attraction. Attraction. Uh oh, now you're talking. Attraction. I, I held that one word in my mind every day. Uh -oh. I want to attract people. But my mind was open to growing to a million. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know. I, didn't, I couldn't see the path, right? I was operating 100% on faith that if I worked every day, it would happen, right? And I, in my mind, uh, I, I, I have succeeded in multiple areas of business with these three steps. Uh, action, traction, attraction. And uh, those are those are my things. I'm going to take massive amounts of action. And in one area, I'm going to get traction. And if I get enough traction, I will actually start to attract business to me. 
Correct. And it's worked in books. It's worked in infinite banking. It's worked in uh, my YouTube channel. It's worked in my life. It's worked in my spiritual life. It's worked with my wife, uh, my children. So action, traction, attraction, and you can't skip the steps. You can't just become suddenly attractive. You have to put in the work. Correct. Correct. If you put in the work, you'll get traction and then you will start to attract people. Yeah. And just to wrap it up, 10x, you know, because I know yes. my audience, <laughs> they love that, that what you're, you're talking in 10x terms. You know, you're talking yeah. about action, building traction. Attraction is huge. Who's got my money, right? I have yeah. to attract money to me. Money yeah. goes where the, you know, attention is at. So if you've yeah. got the attention, trust me, the money is going to come. Yeah. And if you've got, yeah. if you're authentic, if you're real, if you manage your resources properly, the money will stay with you. It's one thing yeah. to attract money and make money. It's a whole nother ball game to keep it, manage it, perpetuate it and multiply it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Absolutely. My, my computer saying it's going to turn off in three minutes and do a reset. And I don't think it's something I can stop. So we'll, we'll have to jump off. But let me leave you with one thing from Grant Cardone, speaking of 10x, mm. that really did change my life. He said, your goals have to be bigger than your problems. Mm. And that made such a huge impact on my life. That's a powerful thing. I was just at the 10X Growth Conference number five here in Miami, and he must have said oh, that wow. like at least 20 times. He had, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he had multiple billionaires on stage all agreeing. So with that being said, God bless everyone. Thank you, Steve, for tuning in with me, spending all this time. Really appreciate it. I look forward to the next. Your computer's about to die, so let's close it out here. God bless Thank everyone. you so much. Okay, bye-bye.